So this is the benefit of being in Southern California. What's up guys? I am Jesse with Adventure Endeavor and today our endeavor is a project. Multiple projects actually. So today we are taking advantage of being at my parents house here in Southern California. He has massive garages with all the tools you'll ever need and I'm actually just doing a couple small small projects but they are going to give me some peace of mind and overall it's just gonna make life a little easier but before we get started make sure you hit that subscribe button and if you enjoy the video at the end please give us a thumbs up okay so project number one for today on the list is combo locks so the standard fifth wheel most motorhomes they all use the same key for your under your base look I already put one on there look so we have a standard keyhole here and unfortunately, as far as I've read, it's the same key pretty much across the board. There's like three keys, so anyone can have access to your underbelly, which is not good, or your storage base. So we actually had a couple that were having issues. They were kind of getting worn out and whatnot. So we went online and we picked these guys up. Is that focusing? Is that, is that good? And so these are actually just generic tumblers with a combo that you can set to any combination you like they actually i think the main use was stated for a desk drawer so i put one in already it seemed fairly simple to be honest the hardest part which was easy was reading the instructions to set your combo it's pretty simple so you can set your combo um, of your choice and that way i don't have to carry a key around i know that everything's secure they feel like they're decently made, I mean, for something that's mass produced. And yeah, so I'm just gonna show you guys real quick how to install these. And our thoughts are that we'll put them on both sides of our underbelly. So that would be four locks. So our whole underbelly is sealed. And then as well, we wanted to, in one of our previous videos, we showed that we did a little lock setup for our lithium ion batteries. So we're gonna go ahead and throw two locks on the bay door of where the batteries are housed and then i think a couple more maybe one on our fuel door because we have a toy hauler so people could realistically just go there and pump fuel and just take our fuel so we'll throw one on there and i believe we'll throw one on the generator i think for some reason keystone set up one there so pretty simple one of our little upgrades it's something that's like fairly cheap will you we'll put them we'll link them below because there's a lot of them and i had to search for a while to find the cheapest ones that seem to be the best quality. So we'll link those below. Let's get to it. This is a standard lock that comes on your RV. This is the outside where the keyhole is. This is a little lifter so you can lift your door. And then underneath, they're fairly simple. So all we're gonna do is use a Phillips screwdriver to remove the screw. And then we'll use a crescent wrench to remove this ring. Pull it all out and then we'll install the new one fairly simple and i'll also show you guys how to set the combo on the locks according to the description on amazon first thing you want to do is set your code to zero 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 so i set it to zero 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 and then you can tell i'm holding the inside part of the tumbler it's basically unlocked right now and it's free so that's what you need your next step is to you have to line up this hole underneath. You can see how the hole is lined up right now? That the hole is lined up there. Now it's closed, open, closed. So you wanna basically open the hole or line them up. And then you wanna take a small device, a poking device. I believe it literally says like a poking device or a sharp device to basically stick into this hole and put some pressure on the Tumbler, see see what I'm doing here? This is a pro tip. Not that I'm a pro, but I'm using my chest. So, because then once you push this in, you wanna turn the dials to your desired combo. And you know what, guys? Sorry, I either have to pixelate it out or just cut that out because I don't 
I want you guys knowing our code. Don't show them. So then you select your code, then you remove your pokey pointy device. pokey device. That's what it said on Amazon. And now your code is set. Yep. So now the tumbler is turning just like it was on 000. And if I switch my code, now the tumbler does not turn. So obviously the code is set. Pretty easy. The directions make it seem a lot harder than it really is. All right, so these are pretty simple. You start with a Phillips screwdriver and there's a lot of extra parts. So we decided we're gonna keep a few of these just on hand in case something breaks or we have any issues. Keep a few in our little toolbox. So first thing is we, we uh, pull the little arm off with a Phillips screwdriver. Then the next step is going to be to get a crescent wrench or the correct wrench, which let me get the correct wrench to let you guys know what size it is. So this is the benefit of being in Southern California. My dad's garage is completely stacked with tools. He literally has everything. And most of the time I ask him, hey, do you have this tool? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, I actually have like a couple of those, but sometimes he can't find them. So I'm very fortunate to have these tools in this garage. We went ahead and we got the correct wrench, just so you guys know. Our factory tumblers, locks, latches, they are a 7 8 inch of a wrench. 7 8 inch of a wrench? 7 8 inch. Inch. Whatever. Of a wrench know. size. 7 8 wrench size. <laughs> <laughs> These guys, everybody's probably like, those guys are ridiculous. Okay, and so we pull the ring off, and then basically the lock pops right on out. Pretty simple. We got the lock out with our lock, and uh, let's go ahead and put the new one in. So this one side here has this little device to help lift uh, your bay door. And this is the only issue I am kind of running into, which is not really that bad. But right here, it lifts it off so it's not perfectly even. But on the underside, it was very hard to get this nut started. So what I did is, I'll show you guys, I just have a hand tight. What I did was I took a screwdriver and just kind of pushed this door in a little bit around here just so I could start the threads and once the threads are started then we should be good to go so something to keep in mind they do sell these um, locks in different lengths but these seem to be perfect other than when you add the little lifting lever so just something to keep in mind So as far as selecting the correct lock, you actually need to measure the distance um, depending on the width of your door. Ours is not the highest end trailer. So unfortunately, I think they make these doors a little thinner. So when you go on Amazon, when you follow our link, it's gonna be linked to the ones that we bought, but I would just double check, confirm. You could take an old one off and measure before you buy, because you wanna make sure if your door, I mean, ours is like maybe three quarters of an inch, you know, some of them maybe are an inch, inch and a half. I don't know, um, the more expensive trailers, but just double check that before you buy. That is basically how they're installed. They're super simple. Just make sure you get the right length. And like I said, they'll be linked below. We ordered nine of them in total. So this is our battery bay where we keep our Lion Energy batteries. So we wanna make sure these are secure. We added these cables with locks before down the road. So we're gonna go ahead and add two of those combo locks on here as well. So that should be a little added security, I guess. And then over here, we're gonna add two. So that's six. So we'll have a couple more. We have our gas door in the back. And then for some reason, um, I guess uh, they want to keep the generator safe and protected. They also put a lock on the generator door. Never lock your propane door because that's like a fire hazard. If for some reason you have a fire in your propane bay, they need to be able to get that open. So yeah, that's just a fun little project. They seem to work very well. Make sure you add Loctite on the, the nut that bolts it into the cabinet and then as well as the Phillips head 
for the latch mechanism. I noticed that ours, just going down the road, were starting to shake loose and occasionally I have to go around and tighten them up. So just put a little bit of medium strength Loctite on there. Should be good, you shouldn't have any issues. Uh, I look forward to giving you guys a long-term review on these. So far they seem to be decent quality. Uh, another tip would be not to over tighten them. If you over tighten them, the mechanism that flips gets a little stiff and then as well as the dials to change get stiff. So if you use that Loctite, you can keep them a little on just on the firm side and uh, it should be good to go. The next day. What's up guys? So we are continuing on with our projects while we are here in California. So many things to do. Uh, our next project is something that is almost unneeded in a sense, but it'll just make life that much easier. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding a cigarette lighter plug, and then as well, we're going to add two USB ports for charging. If you guys have been following us for a while, you know that we love our Green Mountain Grill smoker, which uses a cigarette lighter plug. So right now what we're doing is we have these two alligator clips and they adapt down to a cigarette lighter and then we run the cord directly from one of our Lion Energy batteries over to here where we normally will smoke our delicious meats. But not that it's that much of an inconvenience, but it's setting up the alligator clips, running it under the trailer over here. The cord's plenty long. Um, so what we're gonna do is right here, under the fifth wheel, so it's protected from rain as much as possible, we are going to drill a couple holes and mount these up, and then we're gonna run the wires over to our battery. So then we can have a standard plug that's right here. Just dropped it, hopefully I didn't break it. So we can have a standard plug that's right here, looks okay. And then as well, we normally have a table outside right here uh, when we're cooking so we will also have a couple of USB charging ports we do have an outdoor outlet that is 110 and it's all ran through the inverter but I figured if I'm adding a cigarette lighter might as well go ahead and just add a couple ports so we hope this is useful to you guys I'll try to show the process a little bit uh, let's get to it so first thing I did was determined the location where I wanted to mount it and then I went ahead and leveled it up the best I could using a straight edge to make sure it'll be level. And then I marked my four um, drilling holes for the screws. And then you always want to make sure that wherever it's going to be going in, you don't have any clearance issues like with this plate right here. So it's easier for you when you're when you're doing all your connections and screwing it in and attaching it. So make life easy on yourself cool so we went ahead and put our four screws in now we are going to mark our holes that we will have to drill with a hole saw and then we'll pull this plate off so we can make drilling nice and easy and then we'll reinstall everything afterwards a few moments later we got our holes drilled with the hole saw we went through the balsa wood on the inside as well now we're gonna take this knife just clean up these edges a little bit then we will go ahead and attach our outer mount. And then I think I'm gonna have to trim the balsa wood on the inside to make it easier to get the rings on to hold these, but shouldn't be that big of a deal. This is what we're seeing on the inside here. It's gonna be a little difficult to get the rings on the backs of these to hold them in tight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and basically connect the dots, cut a slightly larger hole so I can slip the ring on and tighten it up hand tight and I'm gonna be using this tool. So this is what we're gonna use. It's a Makita oscillating tool. So basically this just vibrates back and forth and it'll be real easy to get in there, trim um, and basically connect dots so we can get our hands in there and tighten everything up. That is why I wait to do a lot of our projects for when we come to visit my parents because my dad has basically any and every tool and it just makes life so much easier. Yes, I could do this with what I have, but you know what? Sometimes, hang out with the dad, do some projects. He enjoys it. So as you can tell right there, basically I just connected the two dots just by cutting that balsa wood. And I was able to get uh, both the nuts started for each of the ports. 
and now on the other side we'll come over here basically what I'm gonna do before I screw it all down is I'm gonna add a little bit of clear silicone all the way around then we're gonna screw it down attaching it firmly and then we'll go ahead and put silicone around the outside as well just to seal it up so got peace of mind and we don't get any water damage or anything like that so we got our plugs all done on this side we are basically finished we have our USBs cigarette lighter it's all sealed up now on the inside basically they give you these short pigtails for wiring so now all I got to do is finish up the wiring which unfortunately is on the other side of the rig so I'm gonna have to extend these wires and hook them up so that is it we uh, installed our locks we got our little outlets all wired up you guys could see the blue light right there everything is working good and uh, it wasn't too difficult it's a nice little couple of nice little projects figured we would share with you guys in case you're curious about a little more security or a little more power I would say both of them are not necessarily a necessity to have when RVing but nice to have make life easier you don't have to worry about losing your key finding your key and then as well it's just another area where you can have power outdoors easy access like always guys if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe we really appreciate it and we will catch you on the next one Oh,